as Bruce shared, I, I have the opportunity to serve as board chairman of the Merced County Rescue Mission and several of our board members are here today. Um, this is a tremendous opportunity for me. Um, it is my honor and distinct pleasure to welcome all of you to the grand opening today of the Village of Hope. Today marks a moment in time, a huge chapter in the story of the rescue mission and its goals and its mission to serve the homeless in Merced County. This facility serves as a great example to our community of what can be done, what can be accomplished when several organizations work together for a common goal. Today we recognize some of those organizations who have helped us and Bruce is gonna do that in just a few minutes to help us really to have this dream become a reality. I would like to share just a short story of how we got here. The Merced County Rescue Mission was founded in 1991 by Tom and Letitia Miller, whose hearts were filled with compassion for the homeless and the hurting, the ones who were living on the streets. Tom and Letitia were retired missionaries from Alaska, and in their sunset years, felt called to begin helping a few, just a few, with food, shelter, water, clothing, and hope. The rescue mission grew and moved to its location on Canal Street in the late 90s. It was there that the men and women's discipleship program got established. And in 2017, that 100-year-old building was condemned. The rescue mission, who was serving the homeless, became homeless. We lost our home and we were forced to get creative quickly. So we began to rent homes, several of which you know were in the city but also in the county. Today, we are currently housing 314 people. All by the grace of God. And this is a caseload um, that you know, we, it just takes a lot of hands, a lot of people. It takes a lot of creativity to, uh, to deal with the homeless. And many of you, of course, experience seeing the homeless every day. The need is great. We recognize that. If we were gonna have an honest moment, um, you know, we'd been looking land, for land for our building for a number of years, knowing that it was a matter of time before the building would become obsolete. We were sure that um, we needed to develop some kind of land or new chapter after years of struggling to find the right location. In December of 2018, we were able to purchase five acres of land because of the generosity of Bill and Carolyn Allum and the Central Valley Opportunity Fund. It was the seed money that we needed to get started. The seeds have grown and today we're able to house veterans homeless families, and we also provide respite care for the people who desperately need it. And by the way, this respite facility is the only one of its kind in all of Northern California. This facility is God's timing. It's the start of realizing a dream and vision that is shared by so many of you. Thank you. Thank you for caring. Thank you for caring for the broken, the, the lonely, the hurting, the homeless of Merced County. For all of you, those of you who might be wondering if this facility is completely paid for, let me make it clear, it is not. <laughs> We have a great start, but we are not this great big corporation with tons of money. The Merced County Rescue Mission is a very humble nonprofit. We continue to depend on individuals, churches, and organizations, many of which you represent, for financial support in serving the homeless of Merced County. All right, that's my pitch. 
<laughs> Don't leave it there. <laughs> and we're just appreciative of all the people who have had such an important part in uh, bringing this village of hope uh, to become a reality. And thank you so much for being here. Being here. I'd like to uh, just make some recognitions. Uh, and as Mark said, uh, this all began uh, with good friends of mine, Bill and Carolyn Allum. Uh, uh, Bill, Bill just uh, believed in what the mission was doing, and, and together uh, they gave us a large gift and said, look for some land that you can buy. So we went looking for land, and it took years. And, uh, but we kept looking, and as he said, in 2018, we found some land, and we were able to purchase it, and it was more expensive than uh, we thought. Uh, however, it was a whole lot less than we would pay today. <laughs> well, that'd be less than half the amount just from 2018. Uh, and Central Valley, uh, uh, Central Valley Opportunity Fund came to our rescue and, and stepped in. And Corey Lucero is here. And Corey, I'd like you to come up and say a word uh, uh, about Central Valley Opportunity Fund and your part. And, and you guys played such a great role in helping us after Bill and Carolyn got this whole thing rolling. And Carolyn is out here. Uh, Thank you, Carolyn, for being here. Corey, come and just say a word on behalf of Central Valley Opportunity Fund. Um, my name is Corey Lucero. I'm with, Central, uh, sorry, I'm with the Central Valley Opportunity Fund. Um, I am just so excited to be here um, to support Bruce and his board's vision for the Village of Hope. Um, when the Central Valley Opportunity Fund initially supported this, my predecessor was in place, Sam Guile. And I wanted to make sure he was acknowledged for the work that he did. But I have to say, since I came to the Central Valley Opportunity Fund back in 2021, it's been my honor to watch this project turn into what it is. And um, I, I had my advisory board out here uh, last month so that they could come and see it. One of my advisors is here, Doug Fletch. Um, and they were just so excited by what they saw and the amazing work that this project is going to be able to do. So I'm looking forward to what is to come. And I'm looking forward to continuing to support the rescue mission and the work that you guys do. So thank you very much. Uh, but as we look for possibilities, uh, Jennifer Marcus from uh, uh, Alliance, Central California Alliance for Health, kind of gave us a little bit of help and uh, some ideas about what direction to go. And uh, we, we did some work. And eventually, uh, Central California uh, Alliance for Health um, gave us a large grant to begin this process. And I'd like to call on Stephanie Sunshine to come. She's the CEO for Alliance. Come in and get started. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much. Um, I'm Stephanie Sunshine. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Central California Alliance for Health. For those of you that are not familiar with the Alliance, we are the public, locally governed, Medi-Cal managed care plan serving 390,000 people in Merced, Monterey, and Santa Cruz County. The Alliance's mission is accessible quality healthcare guided by local innovation. Our vision is healthy people and healthy communities. In 2015, our board established the Medi-Cal Capacity Grant Program. And that program is intended to use Alliance financial resources to support community partners in expanding the services and the capacity of services that are available to people with Medi-Cal in our communities. And through that program, you've heard today that we were able to make $2.5 million available for this project. And we're just thrilled to be able to do that. <laughs> the Alliance knows that access to safe and stable housing is a critical component to people being able to get healthy and to stay healthy. And so we are thrilled today to be able to celebrate the Village of Hope grand opening and the opportunity to support the vital respite services that will be provided to Alliance members and other Merced County community residents. I'm joined today by Jennifer Marcus and some of our care coordination team. I'm also joined uh, by Kate Nestor, who's part of our Medi-Cal Capacity Grant Program Development Team. They've been working diligently in partnership with the county and the state to bring expanded case management resources into Merced County as part of the state's CalAIM initiative, which is intended to transform services for people with Medi-Cal. And the state's vision is that local partners, like those of us here today, will work together to bring resources to the fore 
to make sure that services like this are available to people with Medi-Cal. So it's extremely gratifying uh, and thrilling to be here with you all to celebrate this really significant accomplishment. We want to congratulate, congratulate uh, Bruce and David and the team for all of the work to bring you to this moment, and we look forward to a, a long and healthy continued partnership. Thank you. Going, we moved in the beginning of March with six people. Now we're 18 to 20 people, and that will continue to grow. And, and it's just exciting to see what's happened. Uh, but the Alliance grant asked for a matching grant of 25%. And I thought, well, the mission, you know, where in the world are we gonna come up with that? But Dignity Health came through, and I'd like to call on Rick Moreland, the uh, interim uh, president, to come up and say a few words for us. Good morning and um, welcome. Um, thank you on behalf of Dignity Health and Mercy Medical for your uh, partnership. It is our absolute um, honor to be able to partner with you on um, what surrounds us uh, today. And um, this absolutely um, is in absolute collaboration in our mission and what we strive is dignity, health, and mercy. This is absolutely at the crux of our values with respect to um, serving the underserved and the disenfranchised. And so to be able to partner with you to see this um, uh, building around us, but then also the future expansion, um, this changes um, a portion of our community and helps so many. It will go on to help so many. So thank you for your partnership. Thank you for allowing um, this vision to come to fruition because um, today it is new and tomorrow it will absolutely change so many lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. And I've asked our, our mayor, Matt Serrato, to come and say a few words. Great day, sun came out for this, beautiful day. <laughs> Finally, and again, collaboration is the important point too. I couldn't be more impressed with this building. Uh, I was here with our groundbreaking uh, some years ago and it was just dirt and weed. And look at this now, walking in today and seeing the finished product, it's absolutely amazing to see it. So I couldn't be more impressed with that. Couldn't be more impressed with the work the rescue mission is doing too. This is just part of it. You look at everything the rescue mission is doing right now, 300 plus people uh, countywide housed because of them for shelter. Um, you have our new uh, city facility, which is going to come online at Childs and R. They're going to run that. They're running uh, the uh, navigation center, too, on B Street, all the distributive houses across the county. So much incredible work on this issue is being done by the rescue mission. And because of that, in large part, um, we saw at our last uh, unsheltered, or our last point in time count um, in January, a 19% drop, believe it or not. You will know quite a bit, but a 19% drop. <laughs> Unsheltered homeless countywide, an enormous drop at a time where the challenges of homelessness persist. So as, as Bruce said and so many other people said as well, it's about the collaboration, it's about everybody working together. And there's so many people here today who've been a part of that. Whether whichever role you've played, in, 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 uh, be it government, be it nonprofit, be it business, it takes all of us, it takes all of us working together. I think we've shown enormous progress in the last year or two, and we're gonna keep our foot on the accelerator, we're gonna keep doing it. So we're gonna keep, uh, keep fighting to make progress, and uh, I think we're gonna show even more progress in the near future. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I guess I'm shorter than Matt. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, uh, I uh, would like to invite uh, my two of my colleagues are here today, Darren McDaniel and Josh Pedroza. Would you mind coming up? And uh, uh, you know, one thing that we're very fortunate with at the Merced County Board of Supervisors is we have a great uh, group of individuals uh, that um, really have big hearts. Um, I, you know, we're all Christians. We all uh, appreciate um, uh, the relationships we have in Merced County. And, um, and so I've known Bruce for a few years now, and uh, he actually lives in my district, the, the great district four. <laughs> anyway, um, and, and so Bruce and I and, and Mark Mayo Kind of really, and I've known Mark since the 80s. We went to junior college together here in Merced. But, but God brought us back together um, uh, about five years ago, right, as I was campaigning and running for my first election as to the board. And, um, and their hearts were so 
um, heavy because they wanted a place, right? And and um, and one of my prayers was that God would bless them with a place because they they really put their heart and soul into the mission, and um, and so I'm just so thankful for that because. You know, God blesses blesses all, all of us, but uh, I thank Him for answering my prayer, and and not only for the two of you, and, and you're both humble men, and probably don't want to call anything. Well, I know you don't, but, <laughs> but look at the lives that are changing. As Mayor Serrato just mentioned, the unshel or the unsheltered homeless number in Merced County went down by 19 percent, and that is no significant uh, or insignificant um, uh, ordeal, and so. Uh, Anyways, I, I just think the collaboration of everybody, and we have uh, we have county uh, employees uh, uh, that are part of our team that are also here uh, today in our audience. And, and as Bruce mentioned, the collaboration. Well, um, so so those of you that have worked with, with homeless folks before, you know, you go and you see them here one day, and then you come back and they're gone, right? They, they're all over. And so how do you how do you help a person that you can't find on a regular basis? Linda Dash said. I'd find a, a place for someone to go and it'd take me two or three weeks to find them again because they had been moved or, or had moved or you know whatever. And, and so now with a place for them to be every night, uh, we had the opportunity for our uh, uh, HSA department, our behavioral health department and, and others to kind of come alongside and provide case management. And hopefully, uh, you know, this isn't their last step, right? This is just one of the steps into their lives getting rehabilitated and for them to be back responsible and on their own. So anyways, congratulations, Bruce and Mark. I have